Welcome everyone, Metal Canyon here, and now for something completely different. Some StarCraft 2 casting. I thought, hey, this could be fun, because I do enjoy myself some uh, StarCraft 2, and I never actually tried any casting, which I do enjoy every now and then. And I thought it would be double fun, because it would not only me be casting my own games, which I'm absolutely amateur at, but I'm also absolutely amateur at playing StarCraft II multiplayer. If we look at my um, seasons, it's... well, there's nothing there. I've never actually played multiplayer StarCraft until now. I'm actually one game away from being ranked. So there we go, one match remaining. So if we do look at my uh, match history, it's all just versus AI and while well, playing some stuff with Jezdemel. So I, I've now finally forayed into, um, well, multiplayer. And I'm getting ranked in one more game. But I thought it would be fun to see a complete newbie cast himself as a complete newbie caster. So without further ado, let's go. All right, so here we go. We are on the map Lost and Found LE. Now, considering I am a complete and utter newbie at the game, you can, uh, well, imagine some really strange build orders or non-existent orders. Uh, me being completely unaware that, for example, a hatchery is being destroyed <laughs> while I'm preoccupied with something else. But anyway, spawning in the lower left corner is, well, yours truly, the complete and utter newbie. In the uh, upper right corner, we have Kekt, the, uh, the Terran. I'm currently playing with a Zerg, or, well, with the Zerg. And I have no idea. Well, the only thing I know about my opponent at this point is that he's playing Terran. Uh, obviously, they appear to me unranked. And I believe as far as StarCraft 2 multiplayer games go, if you are unranked, it will show you other people as unranked as well, even if they are ranked. Anyway, my, uh, my opponent is already going for the... I think this is a pretty standard build. He's uh, walling off his entrance to the main base with supply depot and barracks and... I guess another uh, an add-on will be coming up here. He's already going for double gas expansion, which I believe is shows that some aggression is going to be coming soon. And he's actually going for another supply depot there. Okay, that's interesting. Now, I'm already going for a pretty greedy uh, expansion here at one and a half minutes. Now, like I said, because I have a complete uh, newbie, add the mechanics and it's casting... <laughs> You might think, well, that's not a really fast expansion. That's just a normal timed expansion. Well, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, here we go. I did bring up this uh, pretty neat UI for the replays up, which I, I kind of prefer. Now, as you can see here, I'm, um, I'm, I'm keeping my minerals down at a fairly okay rate, I would say. I'm uh, never floating too many, too many uh, minerals and gas, which, you know, all the pro players, you'll usually see it pretty much zero all the time because they are using their resources in a pretty good way. Now, he did go for a command center upgrade for the uh, orbital command, which allows him to drop mules and, of course, increase his resource income by quite a lot. Uh, a lot of casters I saw get pretty upset when uh, people don't go for an orbital command because, obviously, they are very good uh, for the Terran because you get scans to scan for cloaked units. And, yeah, my... my uh, opponent is going for a pretty big push here with the uh, double factory expand. Now this is this is a pretty newbie mistake I made here. Instead of just going forward to uh, check out what my uh, opponent is going for, uh, I ordered my overlord to go back, which of course, you know, it's a sacrifice overlord in any case, because it is going to get shot down, but I should have had it keep going so I could see these two factories. Of course, this being my very first multiplayer game, I did go through all the campaign in uh, the original game. As you can see, I'm uh, supply blocked here. I'm going for two overlords at the moment. Uh, but yeah, okay, he's gonna, he's gonna do the switch here, I think, with the barracks and a reactor. So he is going for two reactors and two factories and probably a lot of Hellion Harass. In fact, I know it's a Hellion Harass and probably shouldn't spoil that. <laughs> it is my own game. Anyway, my, uh, he's already at saturation, 3-3 three, three, double gas, and all the workers he needs. But he's not going for an expansion, so he is hoping to uh, close out this game pretty early. 
Yeah, I, I feel very, very satisfied with my uh, casting here. I feel like a professional because I already know what's going to happen pretty much in this game. But yeah, in fact, he is going for uh, four Hellions at a time, and he's actually queuing them up, which is, um, well, not unheard of, of course, but considering I was mostly watching uh, pro gamer uh, matches, which is where I also picked up some of the tactics that you know macro and micro that you can use uh yeah he is already going to push with four hellions now what i have is some links no link speed is speed it is about to uh finish which is going to help me quite a bit my creep spread is uh, it's not really that great i should be doing more with that and of course i'm not on top of queen injects i am getting better at that but unfortunately i'm moving out with my links just as my opponent is over here stealthily approaching my base with the hellions and he will be able to do quite a bit of damage here uh i'm sending my links back which well, probably not such a bad idea at least i'm pulling my drones away from the mineral line he did get quite a few kills over there Already six drones killed. Oh god, eight drones. But of course, this uh, this little harass will be uh, stopped by the queens, or well, by the lings, I suppose. I'm already going for the roaches, and over here, <laughs> I'm attacking my own spawning pool, which I didn't notice until a little later, because while I was using um, uh, A and move to uh, to force attack my units, and apparently I also took some of the drones with that fortunately didn't really do that much damage but here we go queen injects and my opponent is uh following up with more hellions which i wasn't very happy about but there you go it's uh <laughs> there you go nicely caught that uh hellion over there i don't want to lose my links over here so i'm i'm treading a little bit carefully I'm trying to micro them, and as you can see, my resources are going up and skyrocketing, which is a clear indication of a player that's not really used to microing and macroing at the same time. I'm trying to uh, block in the Hellions here, no, not really knowing whether this is a good trade-off or not. I just want this uh, harassment here to stop. I want my creep tumors to be left alone. You know, just leave them alone. I'm trying to block him in with my links, and I do finally do that. I did lose quite a few. Uh, but I thought in my mind that that was a fairly good trade-off. I'm going for more roaches at the same time. Also I realized that I should probably go for another hatchery at this point because... And uh, we'll have another engagement here. And I decided, hmm, maybe considering my roaches are so slow, maybe I should group them up for a little bit. And uh, yeah, every time they say for a newbie player, if you if you have too much... To spend, just go for a macro hatchery. Not necessarily a new expansion, just a macro hatchery so you have more larvae. And over here, I'm hesitating to attack. My roaches don't have the speed. I'm not even going for the roach speed, which I should be going for the glial reconstitution, I believe it's called. But uh, none of that at the moment, because like I said, I'm uh, preoccupied with all the other stuff. I'm trying to pull back onto creep so my roaches have a bit more speed. And I'm also not really producing any defenses here. Here we go, nine roaches, which of course is going to be quite useful against these. But here comes the, well, pretty much killing blow. My uh, Kex is going to, well, not my Kex, but my opponent is going to try and harass me here with the Hellions occupying me while, of course, gonna go in with those... Um, Banshees, his cloak is about to finish. He's only waiting for that right now. Hiding over here, and that's just going to be really bad. I'm trying to block my opponent here, thinking that if I attack these rocks, they will roll over and block this uh, entrance. But of course, that's not the case. And here we go. The, the Banshees are about to get into my main <laughs> mineral line and just wreak absolute havoc. Now, at this point, I'm saying, oh, no, what the hell is going on? <laughs> I have no detection, of course, not remembering that I could morph my overlords into an overseer at this point. He's going for my queens. I'm not really sure if that's uh, something I agree with. He should probably just go for my uh, drones here. There we go. I'm trying to micro my roaches a little bit. They were uh, stacked on top of each other. But here we go. My... <laughs> My mineral line is just getting completely annihilated over here, and so is my income, which is now pretty much the same as the Terrans, which is not what you want as a Zerg. But yeah, these uh, 
these banshees have just been paying off for my uh, opponent far, far too much. Now, I, I do have a quite a sizable um, roach infestation here, if you like. Uh, my creep spread is pretty much non-existent. Reminiscent very much of uh, newbie players. And the Banshees want more. They are going for the other, for my natural and the mineral line. And of course, doing a great job getting, well, five kills, nine kills, and 14 kills. So I would say those Banshees have paid off a lot. I've tried putting down some uh, spore crawlers, but far too late, far too little. And in fact, these Banshees will be uh, running out of energy before I will be. <laughs> detecting them now i'm going for a big push here and in fact he's got some siege siege tanks but i'm uh, taking care of that still taking heavy heavy losses in in between and moving out of that range of that siege tank trying to clear up or clean up his uh, mineral line here and in fact i am doing so i will be forcing a uh, lift of the orbital command center and in fact my hatchery over here gets lost to these banshees i'm still producing some more roaches well actually none of them at the moment and of course being a complete newbie i'm uh, i'm pulling back here where i think i should have just pushed but of course i didn't have any vision of what was going on up here unfortunately these uh, roaches get sacrificed as i still had them rallied to the enemy base but i think i just maybe maybe had enough forces to push through uh the couple of siege tanks, but, well, not really sure about that. Now, these, uh, these hero banshees have 23 and 12 kills, if I saw that right. Absolutely ridiculous. Trying to cloak again, but, of course, this was more luck than not on my part. And, uh, clean that up. I've got zero drones. I'm trying to drone up again. Uh, the queens did their job. And here we go. The spore crawlers <laughs> that should have been there far, far earlier i'm sending these drones over to the mineral line without realizing that i should really rebuild the hatchery immediately i still have a lot of minerals uh, remaining here here we go okay so slow responses but my opponent Kex here is going for a big push right now unfortunately i wasn't really producing i still have quite a bit of uh resources here and he's going to siege up and just clean this up and at this point, I'm just thinking, yeah, that's that's really not going very well. If if I was uh, maybe creating more units there, while uh, my roaches were going back from his base, if I was rebuilding my base and uh, rebuilding more roaches, I maybe could have been able to uh, repel this attack. But of course, this is a lot of uh, siege tanks, especially for my meager force. And those uh, spore crawlers actually not doing much at all. <laughs> this hatchery is gonna go down. Oh, both of the evolution chambers also. And at this point, I do have a sort of a secret hatchery up there, but nothing really going on. Some desperate lings popping out. And at this point, yeah, I think that's all over. As you can see, my his APM is about 400. Mine is about zero. And... Uh, I GG out because, well, well played, sir. This was my very first multiplayer match. And of course, he was uh, much more experienced than I am, I would say. And just well played. Although I have a feeling that I could have come back from this. I still had some resources left. If I was a little bit faster on rebuilding my army and uh, putting up another hatchery and just droning up, I think I could have repelled this if I was uh, quick enough. And, you know, maybe I still have the chance, but of course his mules really saved him here. He had two orbital command centers, and uh, those mules just, they do so much. I mean, if you look at the income here, 1,500 minerals with the mules, and considering I destroyed his entire mineral, mineral line here, and I only have about 700 at this point. So anyway, I really hope you've enjoyed this little... Uh, amateur cast of an amateur game of my foray into multiplayer starcraft completely unranked we'll see what happens when uh, i go for the next game i don't know what will but we'll see thanks for thanks for watching and uh, let me know down in the comments what you think about this i know this will probably be a bit ridiculous uh, including my commentary because if you've been watching any professional starcraft then uh, well you're most likely used to uh, pretty good games and pretty good casts. So anyway, have a good one. I'll see you in the next cast. Bye-bye.